Brought to you by Charity Mobile, the phone company that shares your values. More information is available at CharityMobile.com. The denial of the Holy Ghost is one of the more misunderstood concepts in the Catholic faith. We know that it's the unforgivable sin, the only sin that God will not forgive. But what is that sin, and why is that relevant to a video with a, with a title like the one that this one has? Well, it's simple. The modernists are so desperate to sell their satanic synod on synodality that they are now saying that rejecting the synod is a rejection of the Holy Ghost, the unforgivable sin. Yes, it's an unforgivable sin to be against the synod. Now, where do they get this stupid idea? They claim, rather absurdly, that the same God who is the same yesterday, today, and forever is guiding the synod on synodality to change the faith via the Holy Ghost. It's an absurd claim. I can barely not laugh while saying it. And to defend that position requires the modernists to make an absurd and frankly evil claims that rejecting the synod is a rejection of the Holy Ghost. It's, it's on its face silly. So let's define the unforgivable sin first. What is the actual definition? The denial or blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. So what is that? Writing for the Catholic News Service, Father Kenneth Doyle explains it for us. Quote, what then does the Mark and passage mean? It means that the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit is one who refuses to accept God's forgiveness. As a catechism of the Catholic Church explains, quote, there are no limits to the mercy of God, but anyone who deliberately refuses to accept his mercy by repenting rejects the forgiveness of his sins and the salvation offered by the Holy Spirit. Such hardness of heart can lead to final impenitence and eternal loss. See Catechism number 1864, end quote. That is the sin of denying the Holy Ghost, to reject God's forgiveness, to not repent of our sins. That's it. Pretty straightforward. Unless you believe the heretical idea of dare we hope all men are saved, which is one of the chief errors of the conciliar synodal church. That error drives the synod on synodality. It's really the only explanation for why people would have such hubris as to think they can change the moral teachings of the faith, that the church has somehow been wrong for her entire history on morality and about who can receive holy orders. You have to believe that God really not only wants everyone to be saved, but actively wills that all but the most very evil of people by human standards are saved. That Gehenna is literally empty except for the demons and the absolute worst figures of human history by our contemporary standards. So it doesn't stand up to scrutiny. But this idea that rejection of the synod is a rejection of the Holy Ghost comes to us by way of one of the lay masterminds of the synod, professional Francis fanfiction writer Austin Ivory, who posted on Twitter an article from Edward Penton in the National Catholic Register. He was not happy about that article. Ivory described the article, in fact, as a dropping of poison from North America. Fascinating. Pastor Jimmy Martin of the Jesuit Church echoed the sentiment, claiming that the Holy Spirit is guiding the synod, and that scares some people. The article in question by Mr. Penton upset the modernist so much because he correctly describes the synod as being driven by ideology, not the gospel. He names names, too. Now, this, of course, upset the modernists because they refused to admit that they don't have the faith. Headline from the National Catholic Register. Who is managing the synod on synodality? News analysis. Voices supportive of church teaching are not being given adequate exposure. Mr. Penton really just describes what I've been covering for you the past few months here. The continental phase of the synod issuing its document by Austin Ivray and his committee of heretics that calls for the James Martin sin to be normalized in the church as well as issuing holy orders uh, onto women and all sorts of other novelties and errors. Mr. Penton covers Bishop Mutzertz and his strong words, saying that God is not present in the synod, as well as some other ground that I won't rehash here. I have videos on all of those things. You can easily find them on my channel. But here's where it really gets to be just too much for the modernists like Pastor Jimmy Martin or Austin Ivray. So you can tell I found this article quite amusing, honestly. From the article, quote, Writing in the Italian Catholic daily La Nuova Busola Quotidiana, journalist and author Lucia Scrosati said those whose views are mostly reflected in the document, the one Austin Ivory is writing, the official synod document, have been reached, quote, not by preaching of the gospel, but by the typical phrasing of pseudo-Christian ideology. She said their responses were then amalgamated with the dominant ecclesial ideology, so that what emerges is not at all the census feeding the sense of the faith, 
as the document suggests. That is the consensus of the faithful by virtue of the theological virtue of faith infused in them in baptism. But rather a consultatio fidelium, consulted faithful, ideologically conducted and reported, end quote. Ouch. Scorsati is saying that the entire synod is an ideological exercise with a predetermined pl out outcome pl planned and directed by a handful of, of, select of carefully selected ideologues. Where's the lie? <laughs> Last week on Thanksgiving Day, I gave you Bishop Athanasius Schneider's recent remarks saying basically the same thing, that the synod on synodality is evil and an ideological exercise to foist upon the church a predetermined outcome to change the church into something else. This is becoming painfully obvious to anyone watching this mess unfold, and Mr. Penton doesn't shy away from naming names in his reporting on this either, which is what upset Austin Ivory so much, probably. From Mr. Penton's article, quote, Another was church polemicist Austin Ivory, who recounted his experience in Frascati in America magazine last month, saying he believed the document, quote, harvested the fruits of the greatest ever exercise in listening and consultation the Catholic Church has ever carried out. <laughs> Bigger than Trent, huh? Ivory, who wrote The Great Reformer, an authoritative biography on Pope Francis, is well known for his progressive opinions and support for leftist politics, which he often shares on Twitter. A former deputy editor of the British liberal Catholic weekly, The Tablet, he is now coordinator of the project The Path to a Synodal Church and a fellow in contemporary church history at the Jesuit-run Campion Hall at the University of Oxford. Mauricio Lopez Oropesa is a native Mexican who played a significant role in the 2019 Amazon Synod, serving as executive secretary of the Pan-Amazonian Ecclesial Network, REPM. The organization had a major role in running that synod and was chiefly responsible for the Pacamama controversy. He says he was inspired by his early experiences and later working with the Jesuits. And like Ivere, he is an associate at Campion Hall. Also among the experts are Jesuit Father Paul Bierre from Burkina Faso, Professor of Old Testament exegesis at the Pontifical Biblical Institute, who was awarded the Ratzinger Prize for his work on faith in the contemporary world and African theology, and Jesuit Father David McCullum, who, since 2020, has served as the founding executive director of the Program for Discerning Leadership in Rome. Another of the experts is Father Ormond Rush, a professor of dogmatic theology at Australian Catholic University, who is regarded as an expert on Vatican II, and praised by dissenting theologians such as Father Peter Hunterman, whom Benedict XVI criticized for leading, quote, anti-papal initiatives, and Massimo, Massimo Fascioli, a professor of theology and religious studies at Villanova University, who is often critical of orthodoxy and tradition, end quote. You start to see why this generated such buzz from the likes of Ivere and his friends, who Ivere, who has been exposed as a pseudo-Catholic hypocrite for his role in the Synod. A little over a month ago, Father Gerald Murray, writing over at the Catholic thing, pointed out the absurdity of the claim that the Synod is being guided by the Holy Ghost. I mean, they've been making this claim for months now. Father Gerald Murray said the following, quote, The Synod unapologetically calls into question various Catholic doctrines under the guise of listening to the Holy Spirit, who, remarkably, is somehow speaking through the complaints and criticisms of those who reject what the church teaches and has always taught, end quote. And quite right. By the way, the Holy Ghost is guiding the church into breaking completely with her past teachings by speaking through people who publicly oppose the church's historic teachings on all the various issues the world wants the church to change their teachings on. It's truly a remarkable claim, and many people just lap it up, regardless of how silly the claim is. Most people just accept the claim uncritically, or they're just not paying attention. Ivory's response to this is actually pretty funny. Part of why the rejection of the Synod is a rejection of the Holy Ghost is apparently because the traditionalists and others who simply want the same Catholic faith our ancestors had are guilty of quote-unquote freezing doctrine. Not preserving the faith, not the same faith our ancestors had or letting doctrine develop, develop naturally as the Church has always taught, Nope. According to Ivory and his allies, the church, the pope, can change doctrine on a whim. That's absurd. But it goes hand in hand with the absurd claim that Francis and any pope really has a magisterium of their own. There is only the magisterium of the church. 
which transcends time. No pope has their own magisterium. To change the faith, you have to elevate the pope to the status of being a divine oracle who can at will contradict what came before him and change the faith at will, which is precisely what Ivere is doing. He and his allies accuse us of trying to make an idol out of past church teachings and documents. I accuse them of making idols of themselves and of holding to the man-centered anti-faith of the world. Always remember, folks, the modernists will accuse us of what they themselves are doing. They are guilty of making idols out of present church authority and documents, distorting the Catholic faith and destroying the faith in order to present a new religion to the world, a new religion that pleases the world and the Lord of the world. They've been at this for years, and the Synod is the best bet they have for sweeping the remnants of the faith away. That's my thought on this. I'm curious what you have to say, so let me know what you think about their claim. Is there something inherently, though, blasphemous about what they're doing here, claiming rejecting their synod is a rejection of the Holy Ghost? Maybe you actually believe the synod is being led by the Holy Ghost. Let me know in the comments, please. Like and subscribe if you haven't. It really does help. Sharing this on social media helps enormously as well. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.